time for another edition of Machina Riders and this time we're gonna be visiting Paolo Abrera. You guys know Paolo Abrera, right? I mean, he's a fantastic uh, TV show host. He's also a triathlete. He's uh, a loving father and husband. So my first experience with Paolo Abrera was in the 90s. During that time, I was in grade school and Paolo Abrera would have been in college, something like that. So the thing is, Paolo Abrera came on one of the coolest commercials during that time. It was for a beer brand, for San Miguel Beer. And they had this theme song called Saba the Nights, which was composed by Mike Villegas, just so that you guys know. They even had a remake of that commercial recently. But the thing is, they got Dick Soto. It didn't make sense. He wasn't in the original. I mean, it's si bossing. It's si Paolo. Para yung kinuha nila, di ba? Para anyway, so Paolo Brera was paired with Ina Raimundo. And Ina Raimundo, during that time, was the fantasy of every teenage boy. I mean, so much sperm was spilt because of her. And I'm glad I'm not part of that spillage. I don't masturbate. Hello, Paolo. Well, howdy. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to my crib. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there are your bikes. Okay, there's a uh, few of the rides, but uh, let's start off with the chat. So come on yeah, into yeah, my yeah. man cave. Wow. Ooh, that's so sad. Alright, welcome to my wow. fortress of solitude. You can like build a, your own motorcycle inside here. Uh, it's a little, I've tried, it's a little tight. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we can work down here. First and foremost, thank you so much. I know you're a very, very busy guy. Thank you for doing this. My pleasure. Thank you for coming out here, man. Let's go straight to the first question that okay. I usually ask. Uh, how'd you get into motorcycles? Uh, how far back were you into it? Um, I actually got into bikes when I was in college in Australia, in Sydney. Didn't have the funds to buy a car. And well, if you didn't have a set of wheels, you weren't uh, getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first bike in, in Australia? All right, my first bike was a uh, GSX. 250. I think it was F. The first year you get your bike in Sydney, you're, you're only allowed a 250, which is, I think, a great idea. It was a very disreputable bike being held together by a lot of duct tape. It had a hole in the muffler, which was sort of taped up. But yeah, it was, it was my first real bike. I moved back here, got into what I do now. I had a few bikes since then. It's not this long list of bikes, okay. but yeah, a few bikes have sort of come Would you on. say since you moved here, did I did I shoot out with your motorcycle? Yeah. Or what do you do now? When I got back here, I found myself an XS250, and after that, uh, NC30, a VFR 400. Sweet bike. Love I remember that. you. Love that bike. We guested you in Radio Republic. You showed up in a motorcycle. Right, okay. I love that bike. Kelly, your cousin, invited you over. <laughs> Genre-wise, any favorites? No, no particular genre. Obviously, Flavor de Jour is vintage, retro-inspired. You know, over the last few years, the whole custom cafe scene has sort of really exploded and sort of got into that. Built myself in 1976. CB 550. Um, beautiful. Thank you. It was a labor of love, I tell you. You know, I go on from the grave. It was literally a basket case, a mishmash of different parts. I went over every single nut and bolt and got it back on the road. And it was actually part of the first Moto Builds. And, uh, <laughs> and it won. And it won. And it won. Motorcycle is a dangerous thing. Yeah. Any, any spills, any. Whoa! Moments. Uh, I've had my share. I mean, nothing too crazy, but you know, the exuberance of youth. Nadjo, pakitang gilas ka in front of people, and it doesn't go the way you want it to. Uh, okay. I just bumps and bruises and scrapes. Nothing crazy. I think every rider has a share of, of spills. Actually, you don't really expect it. It just, it just happens. Right. Pratpak. How did you guys end up together? Pratpak was was formed. Geez, the history is a little hazy. You're asking the wrong person. I'm terrible with dates and names. Ano nga ba mga pangalan nun? Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was basically a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, the Ducati Scrambler. It was a very popular bike and it was a good sort of gateway for many riders to sort of make their big leap into motorcycles. Maybe not the wisest of <laughs> first bikes, but... <laughs> The group of Andy Ryan, si Drew, si Echo, and Direk Sid, Madrazo, they had all gotten a scrambler, a Ducati scrambler. And they had a little group going, comparing notes. Very excited about this this bike of theirs. For many of them, it was their first legit bike. They were originally called the Scrambler Eggs. 
real imaginative guys. <laughs> oh, let's call ourselves the Scrambler. Yeah, 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 we've got scramblers. Let's call ourselves the Scrambler Eggs. <laughs> yeah, it was just like a little group where they would trade ideas on the bike and trade experiences on the bike. Because Drew and Sid were guys I, I knew from the triathlon circle. I mean, oh, oh, si, si Paolo, na bumo motor yes, anja. I wasn't on a scrambler, but they said, fine, we'll change the name. Hindi na tayo scrambler group. We'll just call ourselves a different name, and it was actually Echo who coined the term. Brat Pack, which okay. is obviously a play on the term Brat Pack. Then it just stuck from there. So at least twice, you guys change bikes like so fast. Right. Pag may nakuso, Sila. <laughs> Sila. I'm very slow to change bikes. I don't have a long list of ex friends. I don't okay. have a long list of ex-bikes. And looking at your little man cave and how you tinker with one, yeah, you would imagine a bike will last with you a bit longer because you're working on it and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like, I like to tinker. I like to do my own maintenance. I like how to far to deep build. are you mechanically inclined? with motorcycles. I mean, what, can you take an engine apart? I mean... Well, I did for the for the 550. <laughs> oh, yeah, I took yeah. the whole thing apart. I didn't get into the transmission anymore, but I did the whole top end overhaul. Where'd you learn all this stuff? Dude, University of YouTube, right? Oh, okay. I, because I generally would ride older bikes. Older bikes need a little bit more TLC, and it's it's something that I, I don't know. I've, I've always I've always liked working with my hands. Did you ever have a, like, a situation like, you the engine and you're like, uh-oh. Oh, but how do you put this back together? What's yeah. this little washer? Madras yan, madras yan. And, and you learn from your mistakes, and oftentimes it's phone a friend, na speed dial na si Toddy, Todd's pan ba to? Uh, medyo ayo na gumalaw yung rocker arm, and what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> older bikes definitely are something that you can definitely get into. When you look at the manuals of older bikes, the assumption was, ikaw ang gagawa nun, babaklasin mo yung motor to do maintenance. And older bikes are built that way. Everything is analog, everything is mechanical. If I move this part, oh, there's a reaction on that part. You know, if I tighten this bolt, it moves this this, this tensioner. So more they're, they're easy to figure out. Intuitive naman. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And, and I think basic my bike maintenance is something that everybody should know, you know. What do you have time for this year? You're a very busy guy. Do you do this as part of a therapy man cave time? There's that, there's that. And uh, hanapag mo ng oras na, eh, if it's something you enjoy. Any advice for those who are looking into maybe, should I try what Paolo did and do this myself? Uh, what's your absolutely, mindset with that? Absolutely, And trust me, you're gonna break things. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna mess things up. But you're also gonna learn. I've, I've had my share of mistakes. I constantly make mistakes. Till now. You just learn by experience. And for me, it's not naman, uh, the ECU is broken. I think I better take it apart. Come on, guys. We don't have to know how to do stuff like that. But I think, yeah, stuff like fixing your chain tension, keeping your chain lubricated, adjusting your clutch, leading your brakes, changing your brake pads. At that's least stuff, know that's, that. That's stuff that everybody needs to know. Because that stuff happens while you're out on the road. And it's skills and knowledge that'll get you back home. You know? yeah. Leave the, the big important stuff with qualified mechanics. But do learn your bike inside out. Are you a daily rider as well? For a while, I was doing a morning show. When we were on a later time slot, I could ride a lot more. When we got moved to an earlier time slot, it became a bit of a hassle because our look changed also. We had to be a bit more business. So, medyo mahirap magdala ng suit in yeah. the backpack and that sort of thing. So, I, I rode a little less over the last couple of years in terms of everyday riding. But my schedule's changed. I'm riding a whole lot more now and asking myself, geez, itong hapa da Why did I not do more of this sooner? So, it's nice to get to get back on the bike uh, on a more regular basis now. The bucket list ride, what is it? And dami. <laughs> We did manage a good ride last year where we all headed out to Sagada for a, a long weekend. That was one of those rides that Eto and this is what riding is all about. You know, the company of friends, beautiful views, beautiful roads. Any plans for like uh, going outside the country to ride? Yes, what when do we leave, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> Africa, damn, Europe, Southeast Asia. You can head out on a dual sport for mostly tarmac or pavement, the middle of nowhere on, nah, a, on an adventure bike. All of that stuff is high on the list, so we're finding ways. We're gonna make it happen. <laughs> so currently, your lineup, tell us about your bikes. I don't have anything exotic. The daily ride now is an XSR 900. And That's it took, pretty special. <laughs> and it took me a long time to get get a, a new bike. I thought it was about time to have something a bit more up-to-date. Admittedly, I still have a Neo Retro hangover, so the <laughs> XSR appealed to me in that sense. But yeah, bang for buck, it's got ABS, traction control. These are things that will save your bacon nowadays, so why not have those? It took a little getting used to. I'm used to the lazier, more linear power delivery of a standard. This one's like, boom, like you're out of here. This is the torque is right up front, and it's just there all the time. <laughs> it's like it's had five cups of coffee. <laughs> but uh, I'm loving it now. That that three banger engine is 
amazing. It's got some things you want to fix. Suspension, definitely. For our bumpy roads, it's something yes. that you need to look at. I also changed the position a little bit. I found it a little too upright. I found it a little too upright. I found it a little too upright. A little bit more aggressive, and I think it, it gives you a little bit more control on the bike. I've got that as my modern bike, mm -hmm. and I have an old beater, which is a DRZ400, which is something that we've gotten into lately, is hitting short track on motards. Yeah. Awesome fun. You don't need any specialized equipment. Just come on out to the track and yeah. ride the track. Don't use your new bike because you're going to drop it for sure. <laughs> so that's why I keep a, a pretty old bike that's got a lot of parts. It's very easy to work on. I've dropped it so many times and I've fixed it myself so many times. Awesome. If, some, if something gets bent, you just pull out your hammer and yeah, do it now, Alicia, you know? I like to have a beater. It's also my go-to bike when I need to go to places like Binondo, if I'm gonna buy materials mm -hmm. and the parts. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go in there with a car. Just in and bang, out, and get um, your stuff. a bike na pwede mong ibangketa, something that you can sort of park anywhere. A motard is, guys, That's get it. a motard, it's awesome. I have that and then I have a borrowed, very uh, ordinary uh, XR200. I've been wanting to do a bit more dirt. That's a skill I want to pick up more, so I borrowed that a couple of months ago. Okay. In, the, in the hopes of getting out to a place like KRV. It has yet to happen, but it's already there. It's ready now. <laughs> Last question. What yeah. is your advice to fellow riders out there? Have fun, stay safe. Always think about improving your skill. All of that sort of, it's kind of corny to, to say it, but all of that comes hand in hand. You know, you make sure your bike's in good shape by knowing how to work on your bike, how to keep your bike in good shape. You make sure that you stay in shape by making sure you gear up properly when you head out for a ride. That way, we can all enjoy riding for a long, long time. Thanks, Paolo. All right. Thank you.